and his, oh, mother, his mother lived, lived alone, alone in the house on the house. yeah whatever no one cares about the story Edmund I'm joking welcome back to Northern Lion plays the Binding of Isaac Rebirth I believe we're due for an Isaac run I wanna as present Northern Lion thank past Northern Lion ENPV XRJ4 I wanna thank past Northern Lion for making the very shrewd decision to leave me with an Isaac run I really appreciate that um, could have left me with a random run, could have left me with an Eden run. Statistically, we might have been totally fine on those, but, you know, the, the Isaac runs, they have a tendency to be a little bit more, uh, casual, guaranteed, easier. Not getting too cocky about it, just saying, uh, you know, they do tend to be the simpler of the, the runs that you can possibly do, and I really feel like that's a good philosophy to have in life, you know, if you, uh, we could go into that curse room, but I was hoping to have a spirit heart and then, you know, go into the curse room and then come out and pick up the spirit heart. So I'm going to be a little more cautious here. My my advice for productivity, and I, I'm not the most productive person in the world, but I mean, the, the easiest advice for productivity is just, you, you know, do what you love. You know, if, if you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. However, that's not immediately practical for a lot of people and it's kind of some bullshit advice anyway for the most part people are like, oh I never thought of that I never thought about liking what I did that makes a lot of sense dad okay so um, my second best piece of advice is always do the shittiest job first like if you have two jobs left to do one of them sucks and one of them's great or at least not as bad always do the shittiest job first I promise it will only come back to help you you know you're your motivation is always highest right at the start of the day. Or, like, right at the start of... Let me put it this way. Your motivation is always highest when you haven't done any other work that day, you know? Some people hit a groove a little ways in. Maybe you want to do something like a warm-up, but I think that's a little bit of a fallacy. I think you're better off doing the thing you hate right off the bat. Maybe you're exercising, you hate doing uh, squats. Because they, you know, it's a full-body workout that makes your legs feel bad, and then you can't walk right for the rest of the day. You should do squats first, man. Save save your glamour muscles for the end. Do your bicep curls at the end if you still got the energy for that. Nope. Eh, it's not amazing, but I'll take it. Um, similarly, that's why, you know, a few episodes ago I was talking about, like... Oh, that's, that's fine. That damage is not so, so bad. Um, a few episodes ago I was like, you know, you should do your homework. This is becoming, like, dad biting by his griever. But we don't have much else to talk about on this floor as of right now, but, um... You know, you should do your homework right as soon as you get home from school because you're motivated to do it and then you don't have to waste any time like psychologically being like, oh, when am I going to do my homework? Should I do it now? No, just one more game of League of Legends and then I'll do my homework, you know. Better to do it right off the bat. And you might say, yes, you know, you deserve a break, but I promise your, your motivation only gets, uh, only gets lower as the day goes along, you know, as you get closer and closer to bedtime. I'm a night owl myself uh, to, to a large degree, for sure, and I still... Uh, I still would uh, much rather do my homework at like 5 p.m. than 1 a.m. anyway. This is Northern Lion's life advice for productivity. Um, one of these days I'll, I'll hire an editor or someone to post my videos for me so that it actually looks like I'm productive. I mean, I made like 5,000 videos in three years, which is pretty amazing to me. We do want that, but we don't want to pick it up yet. I do want the black heart primarily out of that, but I want to go to our curse room first. Um, you know, I'm, I'm productive, but I'm guilty of not doing the things that I don't like, like editing. So, maybe I'm a hypocrite, but learn from my mistakes. But you won't, but that's okay, because I didn't either. Uh, okay, sure, yeah, two guppy items on our first freaking floor curse room. I'm really glad that I went into our, uh... Into our curse room there, despite the fact that we were slightly lower on HP. I still think that that was probably demonstrably worth it. If one of those had been Guppy's head, it's actually very conceivable that we could be Guppy already. So, our our principal goal here is to not die. Followed by that, or following that, uh, getting a deal with the devil would be ideal. Yeah, I'm not surprised I got hit. I'm I'm starting to get a little little nervous here, uh, but I still have not ruined my deal with the devil chance. I really should not have been hit as as badly as I got hit there. Let's not throw here. Just play it cool. Obviously, we're gonna pick this up. Dad's key, uh, no. <laughs> I wish, I wish it was later so maybe we could make use of this, but I, I can't justify using it now. It's just a little too risky. And I've got to keep the D6. That is really nice. I appreciate that. I figure we'll use the Game Kid once, and honestly, I could have easily taken damage on that room. I hate that enemy. Get hit a lot there. Uh, it's probably in our best interest to go to the shop and try to buy a Spirit Heart, if I had to guess. 
Maybe we don't have to blow up our donation machine? Yeah, there's a lucky penny for us right there. No spirit heart, so I'll tell you what, I'll buy this. And I'm hoping we get a chance to get another reroll on this floor prior to the devil room. It's, uh, or the boss room, maybe. Let's not count our chickens. There is a pretty good chance of it, at least. Empress card is nice, but, you know, we're just, uh... Picking up all sorts of space bar items that we have somewhat limited interest in. There's a tinted rock, though. All we gotta do is not get hit, and we should have a very good chance to get a spirit heart. Two spirit hearts, in fact, so we're probably sitting pretty now. Devil Empress? Well, we should use one on the boss on this floor and, and take the other one down to the next floor, is what I'm thinking. We probably will not get another reroll now that I look at it. In a way, it's actually, um, yeah, we'll open it. In a way, it's actually not that bad to not get another reroll because we're on a uh, Curse of the Blind floor. You might be saying that's ridiculous, but I think you gotta, you know, I might be wrong, admittedly. It's just one of those ideas that popped into my head. But mathematically, you know, we've missed, we, well, because we're on a Curse of the Blind floor, we're missing one of the big cases. Oh, that's so good. That oftentimes leads to rerolls, and that's shitty passive items. We won't be able to reroll shitty passive items because of Curse of the Blind. At least we won't be able to knowingly do so. That was almost very stupid damage. Uh, all we're going to be able to reroll is active items of, of all kinds. So um, I think that we're less likely to use a reroll on a floor like this because of Curse of the Blind. I may be slightly mistaken in that regard, but uh, it, it seems to make sense to me. One of those things that you know doesn't strike me as immediately obvious, but when I think about it a little bit, it, it does make sense to me. Seems like the D6 is less valuable on Curse of the Blind floors. We're going to keep exploring just because I assume there's only a, a few more rooms left down here. We're not going to get another reroll. It's not like there's going to be six rooms hidden down here or anything like that. Um, so we might as well just figure out what's going on down here. Who knows, maybe there's some kind of library or something. i got to admit, you know, these uh, golden chests, courtesy of Guppy's tail, have been working out real nicely for me thus far. Okay, let's try not to maybe cut it so close that time. That was a little safer, I think. And another penny. We could buy one of the items from our shop, and I don't think it's a bad idea to do so. We are taking a little bit longer than you might expect on this floor, but I think it's a good idea. You know, find our secret room. Could have saved a key there, which which may have been valuable, but whatever. Uh, do you want to... Yeah, let's let's buy an item on our shop. Was one of them half price? If there was a half price item, I'd take that one. There was not. Uh, top left. The ladder. I don't feel like this is a huge problem, like a huge loss here. This could be our second secret room. Mostly I wanted to check just in case it was so I didn't have to backtrack. And uh, if that's not, then our second secret room is probably... Looks like they've created a like spider web tunnel for us to check there, not there, so maybe here? Alright, it had to be somewhere in this vicinity. I'll play until 5 cents and I'll blow it up. Just following the Isaac flowchart right now. Um, didn't really end up working out for us, but that's okay. What do we got? The haunt. Not... Oh, that was very dumb. Not a huge problem. We've gotten small rocks, so our damage is, uh... Decent. I'm okay with taking one spirit heart in the haunt. I think that's a, a very reasonable amount of damage to take on a fight like this. Probably a, a slightly below average, uh... Performance. I had to turn my brain off there so I could actually, or the communication aspects of my brain so I could turn on the dodging aspects. You know, I don't have full power. It's like an FTL ship here. I've got to constantly micromanage. We will take this right off the bat. Pentagram is an amazing pickup. And is this Guppy? It is not Guppy, but it is pretty good. Yeah. So we've really, really improved our damage. I think we're done with this floor. Yeah. We've really, really improved our damage. Um, our survivability is fine. We're one guppy item away from becoming guppy. Slightly low on HP, and I'll admit that probably through the first few uh, floors here, I've taken more damage than I would expect to take on average, which is maybe indicative of, of my performance not being uh, super great right now. It's alright, you can't have uh, a Stephen Stephon Curry night every time. <laughs> I don't know if that's a basketball player or some kind of Thai dish. I don't want to be a, an armchair uh, basketball fan, but I was glad that the Golden State Warriors defeated, spoilers, defeated the Cleveland Cavaliers because I live closer to California. Which is like, the whenever I see people tweeting about hockey like that, they're like, I don't really watch hockey, but way, go Blackhawks. I'm like, you fucking posers. But I was like, hey, 
I, I'm glad that in the sport I have no vested interest in. No offense, man. Um, you, know, you gotta you gotta choose your your battles. Um, I'm glad that in the sport I have no vested interest in, the team that is geographically somewhat closer to me won. Way to go. I feel like I had some small part to play in that. Anyway. I hate that, you know, the, the NHL and the NBA should come to some sort of agreement with one another. And right now, if you're, in, like, in Europe, you're like, what in the fuck are you talking about? I'm happy to have the parasite there. The NHL being the National Hockey League, the biggest, um, you know, ice hockey league in the world. You know, you never know how much it pains me to say ice hockey. We don't, we don't really follow, follow uh, field hockey over here. Uh, well, at least it's not some kind of like cultural zeitgeist or anything like that. Anyway, not that I'm trying to disrespect the sport. The NHL and the NBA run at like exactly the same time. Literally, they're oh, that's so good. Their seasons start within. I don't know, maybe a week and a half of one another? And they ended, and they often end, but this year in particular, they ended within like two days of one another. Actually, it was one day of one another, so like, I really feel like it would be easier for me to get into basketball, and easier for basketball fans to get into hockey if they could, uh, you know, spread those seasons out a little bit. Now, I know that the NBA is a larger sport, but hear me out. I feel like the NBA should move to a summer schedule, to some extent, because A, it's only competition is going to be baseball, a sport that, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to hate on baseball, but I, I feel like basketball, it's got a little bit more of a contemporary nature to it. You know, baseball, it's cool, it, it's got, um, you know, that statistical heavy aspect to it that a lot of people love. But I think you could watch basketball and baseball concurrently, maybe. But maybe that's me uh, undervaluing the MLB versus the NHL. But, from an environmental standpoint, there are outdoor hockey games played uh, during the NHL regular season. It basically needs to be winter. Hockey is a winter sport. It's in the Winter Olympics. Basketball's in the Summer Olympics. Why does the basketball season run from September to June? Or October to June, I suppose. Hey. When it should, in my opinion, run, you know, maybe March to October? I don't know. You hear me, David Stern? I'm just, he's like, wow, I've never actually considered that. What, a, what an incredible business analysis. What management firm do you work for? Nah, dog, freelance. Seriously, though, I think, like, that's the reason that I think I'm going to start following, the, in case you're really into the banal minutia of my life. We'll take hive mind here, because we're probably going to become guppy. Um, that's the reason I think I'm going to start following MLS, is because its season only slightly overlaps. MLS is the North American Soccer League. Football, well, it's not... It's not the North American Football League, because American football is something different. But anyway, um, it's the North American Soccer League. It only slightly overlaps with uh, with the NHL, so it's like a perfect complement sport. Uh, plus, Vancouver has a local team and lots of cool rivalries in you know Portland and Seattle. Anyway, this has been a discussion that, if you're a sports fan, is probably, or if you're not a sports fan, is probably just incredibly boring. Uh, and I can understand that, but you got to cut me some slack because I just finished, you know. Well, the E3 is almost done over here, which should give you some illumination about where my backlog is at. But anyway, I d had to deal with everybody that I follow on Twitter being like, Oh, they're putting sports games on the screen. Call me when the sports games are over. Y'all are missing out. Sports games are like the ultimate RPG, man. Play a character over a 20-year career. Improve their stats. Improve your strategy. There's emergent gameplay. It's, it's like the original Crusader Kings 2. I should really be shooting all this poop, considering we have petrified poop. But I've, that's well-trodden territory for me. I'm not gonna go. Uh, I'm not gonna go off on a tangent there. But you'd be surprised, you know. I go to these paradox events. It's uh, games writers and and YouTubers who are like focused almost entirely on strategy games. There's a and, and RPGs. Uh, there's a huge overlap. Come on with this frame rate, please, Skype. What are, you, what are you doing? There we go, it fixed itself. Um, there's a huge overlap between people who play like strategy games or enthusiasts of grand strategy games and people who um, play these uh, sports games as well. And deservedly so. I would rather take something that is not Mom's Knife because of the fact that we're guppy already. And I should not have re-rolled that. Um, I should have re-rolled re -rolled that before we went into the room, but I kind of wanted to hedge my bets. So we have Hive Mind as well. I think we'll just take Headless Baby, you know, head down to the next floor and start to work on our HP uh, at that point. So we're guppy. We're a little bit low on HP, but mostly probably totally fine. Way too slow for boss rush. It's just me, like, the transitions are seeming a little framey right here. I wonder if there's actually, like, 
not just a message on Skype, but a conversation that is constantly causing it to, to change here. I'm not going to blame anybody but myself, as I did just before the show, or just before recording here. I was like, hey, Nick, what do you want to play as the second game on the docket of the NLSS today? So, pretty much uh, brought it upon myself. We've had, like, exclusively good pills, which is amazing, considering we don't have any kind of PhD or anything like that, to the best of my knowledge. Alright, what do we want now? I mean, anything that gives us even more damage is great, or uh, increased rate of fire. Like, it's, it's kind of boring. This is looking like a pretty automatic win here, which I love. Oh, you know what? It's not boring at all, actually, because we have the opportunity to take Judas' Shadow. So, uh, the other two items are interesting. We might be able to come back for those, but yeah, we'll, we'll try to kill ourselves on this floor to gain... Judas' Shadow, and uh, we know that there's a pretty good chance that we can do so, because there's Balls of Steel, and um, actually, we might be able to kill ourselves on the Blood Bank, and get, is that Balls of Steel? It is, okay. So we might be able to kill ourselves around the Blood Bank, get a lot of money out of it, and also maybe get a Blood Bag, which would be awesome as Judas to keep our, our dream alive. Yeah, okay, I'm just doing the standard double check in my mind. Did we, um, did we pick up Judas' the Shadow? Yes, we have Guppy's Hairball, or sorry, Guppy's Collar, which is giving us the times one question mark, and then Judas' the Shadow is the times one Judas' the Shadow. This would be the perfect time for you to pay out. Okay, that's fine. We are now Judas' the Shadow, or Dark Judas. I'm a little amazed that we did not actually get, uh, at least the IV bag out of it, but I guess I'm happy with it, all things considered. And our HP is looking alright right now. Obviously, we will be uh, in a little bit of a fragile position for the immediate future, but we'll we'll work on that, you know? It was well worth it for the, the damage multiplier, which I, I should really look into if I'm going to keep praising Judas' Shadow, but isn't the damage multiplier from Judas' Shadow uh, times two? That's I've been operating under the assumption that it's that it's a, a two times damage multiplier, so... Um, two times damage markiplier, I mean. It's, uh, it's good damage. And I, I've been using it, I, I do not think, there might have been one run in recent memory where I did not use Judas' Shadow, but as of right now, this has become one of the dominant stories of the streak, I think, is the, the renaissance of Judas' Shadow, and I love it for it, because I, there have been times when uh, I'm guilty of being like, oh, Judas' Shadow, we don't really get a chance to use this. It's, it's this exact same way that I felt about Nine Lives for a long time. It was like an eight-month period in Vanilla Isaac where I never took Nine Lives because I was like, well, it lowers your HP. It took a lot for me to climb out of that hole of ignorance. Uh, and here we are in the, uh, the hole of enlightenment. And I'm thinking the same thing is basically happening with me and Judas' Shadow right now. This has been a really nice opportunity for me to... Uh, for me to learn uh, what it means to be uh, what it, what it means to be a man in today's world. No, but basically though, what it means to, uh, to use Judas the Shadow, which is an item of some repute, perhaps a little bit underrated by uh, by some people, my old self included. I realized, by the way, that we could have gone to our uh, wow, that is fast. We could have gone to our deal with the devil room and reroll the items in there with the charge that we've had for quite some time. I will take Lucky Toe. Petrified Poop is probably I'm not gonna say overstate its welcome, its usefulness is probably just about done, you know? Not much poop remaining for the rest of the game, we got a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> sure, I think it's okay. We have the bombs necessary to do something with it, so it's not terrible or anything like that. Uh, and our shop should be up here, we'll see what's in there, but um... I, I forgot what I was saying. Oh! I don't want to uh, necessarily re-roll the deals with the devil yet, because I don't know what's gonna be there, and that scares me. Uh, I don't want to necessarily take something I can't afford to take. That's another Balls of Steel pill, so we'll definitely take that. Uh, I think we'll reroll these once. And Humbling Bundle's definitely worth it. Converter's kind of interesting, but I don't value it that highly. Uh, it's only Catacombs too, so... I don't really feel the need to immediately donate to our donation machine. We can use the money for our own purposes uh, for the time being, and then maybe... in the near future on uh, Necropolis 1 or Necropolis 2, donate some money. We've been donating a lot of money to our donation machine. It's been working out nicely for us. I really appreciate it. I hope it really appreciates it as well, but really, I don't care if it if it does, because it's such an integral part of our run that I want to make sure that it knows it's it's welcome. Thought maybe second secret room here, because it's not in any of these other rooms. Uh, maybe one of these two? No, it wouldn't be that one. This one? Alright, well, I've decided that... Oh, no, we've already been to our second secret room, you ding-dong. It had the... It had the black heart in it. Well, now I feel a little silly. We'll come back here and we will re-roll 
these two. And yeah, I think we take Pact and then Abaddon and we should be at full HP still. Like, maybe full HP with black hearts, or close to full HP with black hearts. Okay. I was too lazy to run through the math there, but I did a quick gut check to be like, am I going to, is there any way I die on picking this up? Because if not, I'm definitely going to take it. Those are two pretty huge damage upgrades for me that uh, I'm very pleased with. So, again, our incredible luck continues. This is when, it's 83 or 84. We're getting up there, basically, is what I'm trying to say, and I'm... I, I'm not counting my chickens. I'm just, every win, I'm taking it, you know, win by win. The the exception being when we win on a random run, I allow myself to kind of be like, okay, that's probably good enough to get you two. Because Isaac is coming up next, and this is maybe a little bit of an above average Isaac run, to be fair. But, uh, you know, this is not necessarily super non-indicative of, of what we sometimes get as Isaac, so I'm happy with it. I will say we're, we're like almost out of damage upgrades from Deals with the Devil that I could reasonably expect to get. I'm thinking like, we, we haven't taken the mark yet, so there's still a chance for that. And we, we haven't taken Death's Touch yet, which would actually be awesome. But apart from that, we've pretty much gotten it all. And we are just basically shitting on the game at this point. Like we are doing so much more damage than uh, the enemies we're facing have the potential to do to us that it's... It's a fantastic position to be in. I should probably stop dodging into enemies if I could at all avoid it. There you are. Other things that would really uh, help out on this run are definitely like an increased rate of fire. So we could summon... Oh my god. <laughs> I didn't even bring it up, but yes, Infestation 2 is one of the best items we could pick up for sure. Um, we are going to spawn a spider from every enemy we kill. It's going to be a hive mind spider. Did you see that? Did you, did you see the speed at which we killed that enemy? Probably like to reroll this. I'll, I'll take it and then reroll um, experimental treatment. It's a black heart, so I'll take it. And um, I can't believe that with all the damage we're doing, we don't have a chance at boss rush. But I guess that's because I, uh, I actually did take a long time on our earlier floors. This is actually going to be potentially extraordinarily fast. Uh, if I want it to be, but I do want to make sure that at the very least we're going to our donation machine because Or our shop so that we can donate to our donation machine. We have 61 cents Humbling bundle has allowed us to pick up uh, more money than we probably would have expected As you can tell right there So if we can I mean if we fight greed, it's okay because we'll probably have a donation machine on our next floor we can also, if we fight Greed on both floors, we could get a donation machine in our arcade. Although it's a little bit less likely that that's going to happen. But it can happen. And without a reroll, we will uh, just wait on that, uh, that curse room right there. But this is looking like we're pretty much already... My head is on the Eden run already. Which is not meant to be like, hey, everybody go watch the next episode. It's more like... You know, this one's over. Maybe I can give you some more pro-life tips. As always, I would like to reiterate that the number one pro-life tip I can give you is take advice from the oldest person that you know. I, the, the oldest mentally sound person that you know, at the very least, you know. Uh, we will buy this. Myself, as a uh, 20... I'm getting old enough that sometimes I occasionally have to think about what my age is. 26-year-old. Not old, but, uh, you know, starting to see the, the oldness on the horizon. Uh, I realized that if another 26-year-old offered me advice, I would say, What the fuck are you talking about? We're peers. You think you're fucking better than me? You think you're smarter than me? You think you got your shit more together than I do? So, uh... Oh, yeah, that's really good. I would, uh, I would advise you to take my advice, write it down, go find, like, a 40-year-old, and then say, um... You know, how do you feel about this? And they're gonna be like, Oh, well, that's stupid. You should learn a trade. And then you take that advice to, like, a 65-year-old. And then you take the 65-year-old's advice, advice to a 95-year-old, and you go, Ah... I think, I'll, you know, I'll take the 65-year-olds. You gotta, you know, choose what works for you is what I'm trying to get at here. Alright, Depths 2. Um, damage almost, like, incalculable. It's, it's extraordinary. And amazingly, we still have the opportunity to, you know, visit uh, the boss trap room. We do have some kind of double key room there. I guess I was getting a little paranoid that it might be a... Uh, are we done with it? Wow, that was fast. I was getting a little paranoid that it might be a uh, dice room, but I guess it can't be because it would show up as a dice room. Look, before you get mad at me, okay? Mom's eye is not very good, but I'm going to take it. 
The reason I'm going to take it is because I don't want to have to, you know, waste my time worrying about rerolls every hour of the live long day. I don't think it's very good, but it's, uh, it is what it is, you know? It's got no pretenses about it. Very close to having all guppy items on this run, I think. Well, this paid for itself. Very nice. Very nicely. I still would really like to pick up a 9 lives uh, item. Just so we have some guarantee that if things go terribly, terribly wrong, I'm gonna respawn, but it's probably unnecessary at this point. You know, we got Balls of Steel in our rotation, we're doing so much damage, like, we're, we're generating more flies than we're losing. More, more flies and spiders, I should say, than we're losing on a room-by-room -room basis. It's actually kind of gross, the, the, the killing power that we have. I feel bad for the enemies. And, yes, we could save keys here, but I don't think it's that relevant. Oh, we should just reroll that. Yeah, okay, cool. Triple shot is awesome. Especially if we get Death's Touch. Wink, wink. Again, I'm not so worried about saving keys, because I think we're going to be fine with all consumables for the rest of the game. Which is not to say that min-maxing is a bad idea, just that I think it's kind of a waste of uh, our time for not really much of a uh, impressionable improvement here. Key beggar, not a chance. <laughs> you hear me talking about how high on keys we are, but no, that's not going to uh, work out in your favor. I'm sorry, my friend. We do have a tinted rock back here. And give me as many golden chests as you want to give me. I will say, that is pretty tempting. Hmm. Just, oh, we've already donated as much as we can donate, huh? I'm going to keep the D6 and reroll Tammy's head. What a fantastic selection on my part. And Pandora's box, I mean, it pays for itself, but there's no real reason to do it. And again, the Spirit Heart, I'm also like, why why bother, basically? We're probably going to get to the HP cap relatively soon anyway. Um, uh, we might want to buy it, depending on what's in our deal with the Devil, I guess. But I'm, my laziness is starting to know no bounds. I'm assuming that Mom is going to die as soon as she touches the ground here. And that, well, there you go. We'd only be getting a half spirit heart anyway, so. Got so many spiders. Very, very easy. Would love to have done boss rush here, but that's okay. We don't really want the nail so much. We'll head down to the next floor, and again, this is a foregone conclusion. That there will be a win here. The one way, and I, I do like to point this stuff out, because maybe it doesn't have, yeah, that's probably better for us. Maybe it doesn't have the greatest chance of happening. But by bringing it up, there's a lower chance it'll happen because I'm conscious of it and I have control over this one aspect of the game. Um, if I find a like double or triple deal with the devil and the, I take it without really thinking about it, that's where I find myself in a, in a losing situation potentially. Then all it takes is a little bit of dumb damage to, to swing it in the game's favor. So I'm... Uh, if a deal with the devil shows up, which it will because we have the goat head, I'll just do my best to be shrewd and say, do I really need this item? Would the item benefit us more than it would hurt us? And, uh, you know, would it, would it increase the entertainment value of the run right now? Which is a decent chance that it's yes. I don't really want the range upgrade. Uh, I, I also, weirdly enough, I, I do want it. I do want it. I'll take it. It ruins our invincibility. But it's worth it, and the synth oil pickup is great as well, and there's balls of steel, we can do something with that. Yeah, now, like, there is no nothing we can do. Even a shitty deal with the devil is gonna work out in our favor, because if we die, we just respawn. And we can definitely kill Blue Baby, or Mom, or, well, Mom's heart, or Isaac, it doesn't really matter, without, uh, without getting hit. At least if we have multiple tries, but probably on the first try, given the absurd amount of damage that we're doing. And we still have our D6 ready for um, the uh, the next floor. Well, sorry, the chest in particular. What, I'm, what I'd be looking for is, like, chocolate milk I think would be cool. Uh, we still are lacking piercing shots, which is a little surprising to me. I guess that's about it. Cricket's body would be fun. But apart from that, we are, like... We're sitting pretty. Look at, I mean, we didn't even make a dent in our in our spider army there. It's a little ridiculous. This is going to be another one of those ones where it's like 28 minutes to get past, uh... I figured that wouldn't be the end here. 28 minutes to get past the depths, and then it'll be like, you know... Well, probably not less time total to get past the chest, but you know what I mean. Hopefully you understand what I'm getting at, at least. That was, uh, dumb damage on my part, but I actually don't think I even got hit there, despite the fact that I was, like, 100% confident that I did.
So I think that we're coming up this way. Probably. Yeah, it looks like it. I'm not gonna go to the curse room. Like, at some point, you gotta say, Stop, stop, he's already dead. And I think we're pretty much at that point right now. It's, it's actually... I'm a little embarrassed to still be on this run, you know? It's like being the biggest kid in T-Ball right now. That might be... close to the fastest we've ever killed Isaac. Especially considering that we ignored Mom's knife on this run in favor of a speed upgrade. Alright, well we actually... In okay, we do want that for sure. And we want Rotten Baby, probably. We'll reroll the other two. Cricket's head, oh my god. Just when I thought that it couldn't get any better, um, it, it got actually substantially better. Although I don't know if you can have more than one damage multiplier active at the same time. So it might just be a damage upgrade, or... No, there's no way it's nothing. I'd be surprised, at least. I actually thought about rerolling Rotten Baby. Just because, um, we, like, one fly doesn't really make that much difference. One fly now and then doesn't make a huge difference for us, but it's okay. You know, it's all part of the winning team. Even the Blackhawks need, you know, like a seventh defenseman. There's no point to actually taking this right now because of Curse of the Lost, so we might as well um, save that as a closer reroll pedestal. This has been just like a run where everything has gone right. I'm very happy for that. But it's important to remember, you know, that that's, it's not going to happen that way most of the time. Probably. But if it does, I'm not going to complain. I don't think we've been this way. Of all the floors to make it so I don't have uh, any mapping. So we, we do have to get our head in the right place for the Eden run next, because we could be on low HP. Oh, yes. This is actually, at this point, if you ignore... The fact that I ignored Mom's knife. This could be the most powerful run we've ever had, and I mean that sincerely. It's at least close. Of course, you get the fact with the flies and the, the spiders into it. But for real, this is actually ridiculous. We've gotten like every <laughs> damage upgrade in the game almost. And I don't think I'm gonna go back and reroll anything, just because at this point I'm like, we might as well get some momentum. We can always. Come on, this is ridiculous, man! The haul of items that we are getting is actually just comical. Now, let's let's do inventory. We don't have Dark Bomb, and we don't have Death's Touch. Those are like the only two items that I'm like, I would be sad to not have by the end of this. We probably will not get them, but um, I don't know if I'm willing to rule anything out at this point, given how ridiculous the, the luck has been so far. You want to talk about Northern Lion luck, this is just... I don't even know what to say at this point. This is like Northern Lion luck with a turbo button taped down. I'll take it, it's okay. We can come back here and reroll uh, Magic Fingers instead. I'll take Lazarus Rags, you never know if maybe we're gonna die like 11 times on this run. I think it's fairly likely. We're not looking very strong right now, so it's just... Uh, I'm hedging my bets, basically. There's, uh, something was alive in that cloud of, uh, that miasma of destruction there, but, uh, luckily, we don't have to worry about that. We've already been to that direction, um, finally we pick, we'll pick up the, uh, golden key, I guess, so that we can stop the bleeding with respect to our keys, not that it matters, probably. Well, if, if every run could be like this, I would be a happy camper. Either way, though, I'm happy that they gave me basically one free run here on the run up to 100. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, click the like button. It helps out a great deal. And, of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.